Coast to Coast AM. He's my go-to guy for health-related matters, Christian Wild. He's an author, researcher. He's devoted seven years now to exploring early detection and prevention of heart disease for you. Becoming aware of non-cholesterol-related heart disease in his own profile in 1997, he sought to better understand why half of all heart attacks were actually happening to people with so-called normal cholesterol. Christian dives into the science of using one's own stem cells as well for actually repairing the damaged heart. As a matter of fact, in a half hour or so, we're going to bring in a stem cell heart transplant type recipient. We're going to explain that story a little bit later on. Christian Wilde. Hey, Christian, how are you? I'm very well. Thank you, George. Nice to be with you. You too. Important program tonight. We're going to talk about a a lot of facets of alternative medicine, things that people can do to fight back themselves. But, you know, I'm a booster of, of modern medicine as well. I think modern medicine done the right way is absolutely incredible, don't you? I do. And, you know, George, it's a great thing that you're doing tonight because medical science is doing a wonderful job of extending our lives and giving us some longevity. I think we have the obligation to ourselves to get involved in our own health care, to be preventive, so that we can enjoy those extra years when we get them down the road. Absolutely. Absolutely. Somewhere down the way, I'm going to be doing a complete program on uh, aspartame and how that horrible chemical got into our food system. I believe that's the number one complaint each year at the FDA is for that particular sweetener. Oh, and what a story, how they approved it. Mm. But we'll get into that when I do that program. What's new with you since we last chatted? Well, I've been working on the new uh, issue of the newsletter, working with uh, different diseases that, uh, and bringing all the different highlights from stem cell research that are breakthroughs uh, for prostate cancer, leukemias, lipomas, liver disease, brain cancer, and some updates on macular degeneration, and uh, some more of the heart trials for the Marvel trial that have come online and are, are currently enrolling more patients to get uh, their own stem cells uh, for heart failure. You know, lately in the news, I've read so many stories and have heard so many things of well-known people. We never hear about just people who aren't well-known, but they're mm-hmm. just as important, believe me. But well-known people dying of heart attacks or getting heart attacks. And, you know, Christian, I'm, I'm at a point now at 58 where, you know, you become obsessed with your own health. You know, the, 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 sh- the show's going well. We're on 510 stations. We're on satellite radio. We're all over the world on the Internet. Everything's going well professionally. I don't want to screw it up by something happening to one's life. No. And so I've become obsessed with natural things that we can do augmented by real medicine. And I see these stories of, you know, people like George Carlin dying, um, um, Ritter, John uh, Ritter dying, um, gosh, you know, the, Kelsey Grammer having a heart attack. You it's, see these. It's endless. Yeah, it is. And it's frightening because some of these horrible situations with these folks could have been avoided, I Definitely. think, had they been doing some of the things you've been talking about over the last few years. Mm, some of the leaders in preventive cardiology be the first to tell you today that heart disease is 90% preventable, providing that you, you, you are being tested and staying on top of everything that you should be, and not necessarily, and this is not a, a, a criticism of doctors per se, but you still need to become knowledgeable so that you can intelligently talk to them about your care, because they are overwhelmed, and you and I have talked about that before. So you need to be involved in your own health care because nobody could ever have the vested interest that you and I would have in, in ourselves and in our families. People like Bob Hope and Milton Berle and George Burns lived a long life. Mm-hmm. What would have happened had they lived that life but all, I mean, and, and believe me, no complaints. They, mm-hmm. they lived very long lives. But what would have happened had they followed some of the things we're going to talk about tonight, some of the things we've talked about in the past? What if they had done those things? Well, I'd be happy to have their years. <laughs> uh, I know. I would, too. But, I mean, do you, do you think, uh, you know, George Burns was, what, almost 100 years old? I don't know exactly what he was. But, yeah, almost. Uh, I mean, could he have added 20 more years to his life if he had you know, taken turmeric, for example? Well, I'll tell you, just 
because you mentioned turmeric, I will tell you that it's the wonder drug of all time. And I, even though this, the, the research report... Oh, we should say the wonder supplement. Supplement. It's actually a spice, isn't it? Yes, it is. 2,500 years old. Uh, even though the, the stem cell report is primarily about breakthroughs in stem cell research, I'm going to devote a good portion of it, this issue to turmeric and the miraculous things that it does. It's involved in everything. You know, the second leading cause of death among men in the United States is prostate cancer. It's no small coincidence that the country of India has the lowest incidence of prostate cancer. And that's just the beginning. It goes on from there. We can talk about breast cancer among women and how turmeric is being used in studies at the leading cancer centers in the world and how Taxol, which is the number one first line of defense drug, in the treatment of breast cancer. And even after a woman has to go through that terrible procedure and comes out the other end after having chemotherapy and radiation, the finest doctor in the world still can't tell her for sure that she's cured. Christian, as as much as a booster I am about modern medicine Mm -hmm. and technology, Mm -hmm. I am obsessed with the lies of some of the major pharmaceutical companies mm. and what they do to try to get their drugs passed when they should not. Well, I'm sure you're thinking about Vioxx. Here's a, here's a drug yep. that, that brought a lot of help to people. It was a, it was a COX-2 inhibitor. Tell, well, and explain what that is. Okay, that's a, a, a biggest breakthrough that had come along was Mobic, Celebrex, and, and Vioxx. It, it, it was welcomed because it brought a lot of relief in reducing inflammation in arthritic patients. Unfortunately, it killed, reportedly, 56,000 people. That's exactly what the statistics before the FDA were, and they pulled it from the market. Unbeknownst to the world in general, turmeric is a natural COX-2 inhibitor. That's something that it does in reducing inflammation, and it has for centuries. That these are not just, you know, these aren't little tidbits that are picked up here and there. I'm looking at all of the journals, the medical journals. I'm tracing them back. And everything that I'm talking about is well-versed and documented in the medical journals and at the major universities. MD Anderson uh, at the University of Texas is one of the leading cancer centers in the world. And basically what they've done with turmeric now and Taxol, which we were talking about, Taxol, as toxic as it is, when they add turmeric to the procedure, the toxicity lessens and it does not lose its effect. Now, the biggest concern is, and women understand this very well that are listening tonight, the biggest concern is after you had your chemotherapy and after you've gone through radiation, the big fear is metastasizing to the lung, and that can happen all too often, when they've added turmeric, curcumin, to the Taxol drug in mice at this point. Now they're doing human trials, but in the mice studies, it would not move and metastasize to the lung. That's fantastic. That's just a couple of things, and there are going to be about 30 of those in the newsletter. Do you think one of the reasons that uh, Big Pharma does not or, or wants to uh, legislate uh, herbs and supplements, control it, maybe give it out via prescription, is because it's natural. Of course. It's available to us. It's cheap. Mm-hmm. Let's look at how, what, what happened with the uh, statin drugs. When Merck went over to uh, the Orient to find out why they had low cholesterol there, they found out that what they were taking in their food was what was doing it, and they turned around and made the drug Lovastatin, Mevacor, which was the first uh, drug to come on the market for lowering uh, cholesterol. But you can find now that there are a lot of those natural sterols that are doing just about as well for lowering cholesterol. If you're on a cholesterol pill that your doctor's recommended, Mm -hmm. and you don't want to just go off it, and we 
you and I always say, talk to your doctor. Talk to your doctor. Some cases you may have to bring them a piece of paper and say, read this article, because well, they may yeah. not know about it. That, I keep hearing <laughs> from doctors that somebody came dragging my book in and caused a heart attack and stroke <laughs> into I, the office. I, I, I had a whole bunch of them, one at UCLA. She said, you have no idea how many people have come in here with mo- that book in hand. Most doctors hate Internet diagnosis and books. They do. But they have a hard time with my books because they're endorsed by some heavy people. Yes, you've got a lot of medical practitioners who like what you do, and yeah. that's, that's important. Well, okay, so let's, let's assume for a moment that uh, turmeric is truly working to reduce inflammation, not only in you know your body for people who have arthritis and pain, but you also believe it's incredible for inflammation in your arteries. Now, tell me... Why inflammation or how inflammation in one's arteries can do a sin? Because it, it involves the endothelium lining of the, of the arteries on the interior, but also light plaques that have developed through the years. If those plaques are sitting on a solid base, they're less prone to explode, as we've talked about in vulnerable plaque. When these plaques heat up, and reach a different temperature, they're more apt to explode. So if the lining is inflamed, then the plaque itself is sitting on an inflamed base, and it's not solid. It isn't solidified. But certainly inflammation is as important as cholesterol. Where I was coming at uh, just a moment ago was if we take all these natural supplements Mm -hmm. and we're still taking our pharmaceutical drugs prescribed by doctors, could we do too much? Uh, You know, can you lower your cholesterol too much if, you know, you're taking, let's say, these uh, natural cholesterol? You know, I think I've just... uh, been on lycopene, is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, that's primarily going to, that won't do as much for your cholesterol, but it will lower your chance of, uh, of cancer. What about red uh, yeast rice, is it? There is one, that's what the cholesterol drug was made from. It's the red yeast rice that they found in China. That was it, okay. Okay, now, you, if you're going to take that, then you need to watch your liver just as you would if you were taking any of the statin drugs. Okay. But I because mean, and what if you're taking both, though? What if you're on a cholesterol eater and you're on this natural supplement, the red yeast rice? Well, you watch, your, watch two things very carefully. Watch your liver enzymes because it, the two together could, could, it's like doubling your dosage. And you were asking a question, can cholesterol be too low? There are numerous studies, and I have them in both my books, that cholesterol below 160, and every one of the studies, and I looked at about 18, I think it was, every one of them done independently in different countries and different universities arrived at the same independent level of 160. And for older people, for longevity, they found in these studies that 180 to 200 was the ideal. When people get below 160, let's say, I talk to people all the time. I talk to a doctor who was so proud of the fact that his total cholesterol was, I think, 105 or something like that. Mine's 135, by the way. Well, okay, you, you're, you're, you're exceptionally good. It could be a little higher than that. But here's what happens. The body, re, the, the, the body has to have cholesterol. It needs a certain level. It can't exist without it. And when the cholesterol gets too low, then the body cannot produce serotonin, and people can become depressed from it. So uh, there's a whole study being done right now uh, that's going to break very shortly. And uh, some of the findings in that study is that uh, cholesterol can be too low and it can even cause stroke. So if it gets too low, uh, 